start. We're going to use the uh, Ninja Foodie one lid, but we're going to mostly use the sear saute method today. We're going to be making a cabbage. It's a peasant dish, but it's going to be bacon, cabbage, potatoes, and onions with the bacon fat and a little bit of butter. It is so, so good. It truly is. So yeah, let's head on over to the Ninja Foodie. Whoa, you guys can see my fridge with all the stickers on it. I'm gonna open it up first off. And it's on sear saute and it's gonna hit start. So that's warming up right now. I admit it, I did preheat a bit, so it is somewhat preheated. And I think I'm gonna, this is like half a pound of bacon. And I'm just gonna pour it in there. There we are. It's not sizzling or anything like that yet, but we are, I'm not sure if you guys can see. Come on over. There we go. Whoops. I think this live cooking is a bit difficult. Um, yes, it's a bit difficult. All right, I'm just gonna let that cook. All right, so I am not technically savvy here, but I'm figuring things out. I hear sizzle from over here. Put my computer up here. I'm trying to log into the live stream as well. There we go. Of course, there's an ad. Hello, there's a oh, bacon. I know bacon. Okay, here we go. Let me turn this all the way down. I've got my computer. All right, who's here? Let's see. That bacon looks like the collar of my shirt. I know. I need to go. Um, I didn't feel like running down to Jimmy P's. There's a meat shop in Naples called Jimmy P's. Amazing meat there. And I'm not big on pork, but they do have um, the heritage or the heirloom uh, pork there, which is fantastic. I get it every once in a while. All right, so we're just going to let that cook down. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch that, but I'm going to bring you over here so I can make you guys all dizzy. So I prepped everything. There we go. You see my computer. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I did prep everything ahead of time, and you know something? Here, let me put you up here for a bit. I totally forgot that it was the time change because the kitchen clock... It says it's 7 after, like, 2.07. And I was like, oh, I got all the time in the world. I got all this time. And then I looked at my, um, oops, my phone and then the computer. I was like, oh, my God. So I had to chop, peel potatoes, chop, slice, and dice in, like, I'm trying to think, like 20 minutes. So, yeah. So I have a whole, this is almost a whole head of cabbage because I did steal some of this cabbage yesterday to make some pickles. Because in upcoming videos, I made um, fish tacos yesterday, and I pickled red onions, radishes, and cabbage. It goes really well with the tacos, or nachos, or even you can put them on a sandwich. They're really fantastic. So, and then I just have regular old onion, a little bit of butter, of course. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be using yet. Pepper, and I ran out of salt, so I have to use my Malden sea salt. A little bit of chicken stock. You can use plain water if you want to. And the potatoes are soaking right over there. So yeah, let me pop over to the computer so I can read here. Inject that in my veins. Yeah, the yellow tongs are really, where, where'd they go? I found these, I forgot where I found these. Oh, it was a small kitchen shop up where I live in New York, in Clifton Park actually. And it's called, I think Whisk and Spoon in Clifton Park. They got really interesting, handy dandy little nifty toys in there. Adam Bomb, I'm a new subscriber, is this a cooking channel? No, it's just a uh, 
chit chat and cook bacon channel. <laughs> Northern Ireland. Hello, Samantha Watson. I do an accent, but I just can't. <laughs> but welcome. Welcome from Northern Ireland. I have to get over there one of these days. I wish I could smell it. Yeah, bacon always smells good. Do you have a margarita? Adam, I'm on call the whole weekend. Because I was going to make myself a lovely cocktail yesterday, like a vodka tonic with lime, because it's my favorite when it's super hot outside. Although it was 43 degrees this morning. And I was like, oh my God, I can't. And I couldn't even have a glass of wine with dinner because I'm on call. I'm on call at 7 o'clock tonight until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, yeah. Super bummer. Getting a close-up of my face. Let me just pop over to the Ninja Fruity. All right, I'm going to turn this down a notch. And turn it down to four. Because... What I've noticed with the new Ninja Foodie One Lid is that the sear saute somehow seems hotter. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just it's different than the eight quart and it's different than the six point five. It just it cooks it much much faster. Just scraping the bottom, trying to. I don't want any burnage. I don't want any burnage, and I want this bacon browned up. So now if I go to work, when I get called in, I'll smell like bacon. No, I'll wash my hands. Um, let's see, that um, margarita, did this freeze up or, there we go. I know, Adam, it's just part of the job. It kind of stinks. It depends on where you work. Like Naples, it's a smaller hospital, so you're on call more often. The larger hospitals, they usually have trauma teams, so you're not on call that much. So there's pros and cons to a big hospital to a small hospital. It's just, I, I okay. So I was gonna do the meatloaf complete meal and the Ninja Foodie One Lid. However, I paid attention to the kitchen clock and I forgot to spring ahead, shall we say. And, um, I kind of ran out of time. So I'm doing a simple peasant dish. I wish I had like a kielbasa or something in the house, but I don't, so I'm opting to use bacon. It's just a peasant dish with cabbage, potatoes, onions, usually like kielbasa or something like that, or some kind of sausage. But I'm opting for bacon because that's what I had in the house. I did have pork belly in the freezer, but I forgot to take it out. So it's just a, just a little one. If I can next weekend, because I'm um, actually finished with Naples this week. My contract, my contract in Naples comes to an end. Maybe next Saturday I can do a live and we'll do the meatloaf next Saturday. Because it's like, um, I think it's meatloaf, potatoes, and carrots cooked all at the same time. And since I have people here live, I'm going to give you... Um, I make good peasant. <laughs> you know something? Some of the simplest or the toughest cuts of meat, as long as you know what to do with them, it's the fabulous dishes. Like, I never ever get like filet mignon. Filet mignon is just, it's kind of boring, but it's just me. I prefer like a ribeye. Give me a good chuck steak and uh, you sous vide that chuck steak and it'll come out just, just like a ribeye. Ooh. Oh, look, I got a super chat. Started watching you at the start of the pandemic and I've been watching you ever since. Love the channel. Oh, 70 miles south of Albany. Where would that put you? Let me think. Ravina's 30 minutes. I know, I'm trying to do math in my head. Where is 70 miles south? I've, I've driven the New York State Thruway I don't know how many times. Newburgh, maybe? No, it's a bit too far, but thank you so, so much for that. I appreciate that. That'll keep me in um, ingredients. <laughs> oh, the bacon. All right, so the four, I turned it down to four, and now it seems, I don't know. There's a big difference between four and five. I don't know. This is some of the things I noticed. I'm going to turn it back up. There we go. Now you're going to see it start smoking and stuff. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. Jeff Shea. 
and I'm sweating. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Costa Newberg. Okay, yeah, it was pretty good. Mmm, ribeye. I know. Ribeye is my favorite. Ribeye is my absolute favorite steak. My last meal would be a ribeye. It definitely, definitely would. But, yeah. Well, welcome, everybody. And uh, the bacon's cooking. Let me just grab um, a plate out of the dishwasher. And, yes, my paper towels are still in my car. <laughs> We just, and we just got a brand new dishwasher because the other one broke. Let's put a plate here. Um, so yeah. So how is everybody doing this fine spring ahead Sunday? Yeah, I totally forgot about that. All right. See, you can hear the change. There's a big, I don't know if you guys can hear the sizzle, but I heard it. Yeah, sorry for the simple dish. Um, and then, since I have you guys here, my next adventure, I will be heading back to New York shortly. I don't know when, because my car has to go into the shop before I leave. And then I was, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I was supposed to head out to Colorado, Grand Junction, Colorado. However, that contract fell through. <laughs> So I was kind of disappointed in that, very disappointed in that. But I'm continuing to look for a new nursing contract. Um, they asked me to re-sign in Naples. I didn't really want to, but I've already spent six months here, so and it's starting to get warm. And I would like to head to the southwest somewhere, but I'm currently looking for a contract out that way. My last meal would be fried squirrel. <laughs> I haven't had squirrel since I was a kid. My, I remember my father used to make it. All right, a few more minutes for this bacon. Fried squirrel. I think he fried it too. I remember. That was back. That was way back in the seventies. I remember that. Becca Mud. Whoa, Becca Mud Tramp. Mud tramp. Are you a um, are you an off roader, Becca? Mud tramp. Cause I think mud. I think off roading. Starting to sizzle. Let me head on over here. make some awesome squirrel and dumplings. Yeah, because squirrel has to be braised, doesn't it? Because I remember, I think it's, I can't remember if it was tough or not. So I remember he used to hunt for deer that he never got, but he used to get squirrels. I remember that. Mm -mm. Now we're going to pull this. Well, I want you guys to see. I really need to hook up two cameras. Except I have to figure out how to do these things. Then I'm going to pull the bacon before it starts to burn. I'm going to turn it down to four. Yeah, I'm not too keen. That's another thing. I'm not complaining. I'm just, it's just my likes and dislikes. The digital, um, I like buttons. Does that make me an old person now? All right. So we do have a little bit of fat in there. So what I'm going to do is take these onions. This is probably like a cup and a half of onions or possibly two cups of onions. Just regular yellow onions. Take my pepper. And as you guys all know, I'm heavy on the pepper. Probably like a teaspoon, teaspoon and a quarter to a half of black pepper. Now I have to use my Malden, but I'm not adding that much salt because I am using the Better Than Bouillon stock and it can be salty. Just pop this over in the sink. Grab a wooden spoon. There we go. Gonna grab a knife, guys. Sorry, I'm missing my head. Now right now I am going to add like a tablespoon or two of butter because you're mixing your fats. 
Especially like if you're making like a pan sauce and stuff, if you take a tablespoon of butter and put it in with the chicken breast or the beef, and of course with some spices, um, you just made your very own sauce. I'm gonna turn this back up. So you guys can see, there is a big difference between the four and the five. The five seems to be like super hot, and the four seems, it's okay, but it's just, it seems kinda, there's just a big difference. Let's see, my passions are hunting, fishing, and mudding. Outdoors all the way. Me too, actually. Growing up, I remember. Yeah, because we used to, you know what we did when we were kids? Thank God my father doesn't, he doesn't know enough. Not, I don't want to say he doesn't know enough. He just doesn't understand the whole YouTube thing. So he can't watch this. Because I don't think we ever told him. We, I grew up in a rural area south of Albany, um, near Kooksaki. And we grew up on a small farm. So we used to get a half a cow from the farmer up the street from us. So it'd be in the big, big, huge, like I swear to God, it was like six feet long freezer in the barn. So me and my brothers would take my father's mess kit and take a steak, go in the woods, start a fire, and cook that steak. Yeah, that was kind of dangerous. But what happened was we lost his mess kit. And to this day, he was wondering what happened to it. Yeah. To this day, I don't think any of us told him what happened to that mess kit. But yeah. Hunting, fishing, and mudding. Yeah, I'm not too good. I just took up fly fishing last year, so I still have a lot to learn when it comes to the fly fishing. All right, so now we're doing it with the onions. We're just sweating these onions down a bit. My lips are sealed, I won't tell him. Yes, please don't. Because he, um, he actually mentioned that right before my mother passed away. He uh, said, you know, I often wonder what happened to that mess kit. It's in the woods somewhere up and down where we grew up. But yeah, we used to do that all the time. It was fun. But anything outdoors, uh, I enjoyed. And another, another known little tidbit about me, I did take the New York State NCON officer test. How old was I, 29? And passed it. And the problem was I had a house and I had a mortgage because you had to go away six months to state trooper school. And I turned down that offer. I regret that so, so much because that would have been an awesome job, being an NCON officer. Because you're always outside. Yes, you're issuing tickets and stuff like that. But still, you're outside kind of like in your own little world, which is fabulous. This is too much information for everybody out there. So... All right, so we're just going to do this up. All right, so we sweated those down just for a few minutes. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the cabbage because the cabbage, this is almost a whole head of cabbage. And instead of, usually I chop it into one inch pieces. I just did this for fun and I put it into strips just to see what would happen. That's a huge chunk right there. Probably chopped that, but it's too late for that. And what I'm going to do next is we're just going to take this whole thing and put it in there. And this will cook down. Whoops. That's the leftovers from the pickles I made yesterday. Now you can go ahead and add more salt or anything like that. What I like to do is just mix it. Trying to get those onions up from the bottom. Whoops. And I'm gonna take some of that chicken stock. This is one cup of chicken stock. And I'm just gonna add just a bit to it. I'm going to say I added three quarters of a cup of chicken stock. You can just use plain water as well. You don't have to use chicken stock. But the better than bouillon is nice to have in the fridge. 
Now what you can do, if you have the cover, go ahead and put the cover on. I left mine up in New York. So what I'm gonna use is the oven. There we go. That's the tray that came out of the Ninja Foodie oven. Let's go back over here. Oops. Hey there, Peg. How are you, Peg? Let's see. Hey, Lisa, I love the outdoors, hiking, fishing, crabbing. Crabbing and swimming, yeah. I haven't crabbed since I've been down here. I haven't gone fishing since I've been down here either. I've been working too much. Let's see. And swimming, yeah. You wouldn't want to swim down here, Peg. It was chilly willy this morning down here. <laughs> it really, really was. So with the cabbage, what's going to happen is that's going to cook for like, I don't know. I do everything by eye, like the set times, because it's different sized pieces. Usually it's like half inch pieces I cook, uh, I cut them into. So it'll be a bit. So I just watch it. And then if I need to add more stock, that's the only stock I'm going to add. If I need to add a bit more water, I will. However, the cabbage will emit like a, um, some liquid. And then you have that butter in there as well. Usually I add more butter, um, like especially like when I put the potatoes in. But I'm going to give this a few minutes. and I'm going to need a mitt because this will get hot. There it is, my silicone mitts. Just so I can, um, yeah. Let's see. I love my Ninja Foodie Digital Air Fryer Oven. Yeah, the oven, man. The oven is fabulous. I truly, truly love the oven. Now, when I do eventually take my nursing assignment somewhere, I'm going to try. I would like to take everything with me. However, I would need a tractor trailer. No, but I, not really, but I really would like to take the oven with me because I was looking on, um, there's places, there's a specialized rental, like there's a rental place online that nurses use when we go somewhere for three months. And a lot of them have like, there's really no kitchen in there per se, like, like a kitchen like this, like a regular stove, this, that, the other thing. So I was thinking... The Ninja Foodie appliances are actually perfect for travel nurses. And also, I would like to take the grill, the new one lid, and the oven. And also, my um, blender that I forgot in New York. I would like to take that with me as well. But I can't take the creamy. I can't take the older models. Because then I really, really would need like a full-size trailer. I just have a tiny little 10-foot it's basically like a toy trailer. It's where I can put my kayak in, my foldable, the origami kayak that I have. I can put that in there. I can put my bicycle in there. Just to take like appliances and some toys and then also winter clothes. Because I have another, an another announcement when I go out west for my journey after my three month tour out west somewhere. Then I'll be heading north. So I need to bring winter stuff with me. Yep. Yeah, Peg, it was chilly willy. Um, I got up at, I forget what time, 6 o'clock maybe, I forget. And of course I run to my phone to make sure I didn't miss any calls for call. And I open up the sliders and I was like, oh, it was chilly, chilly willy. But I did open up the sliders and air out the condo because it's nice because we can't do that very often down here. Even in the winter in Naples, it's more tropical down here. And it's just too hot to um, leave those doors open. But so far, good weekend. I didn't get called in last night. Let's cross your fingers I don't get called in tonight. Let's go back over and check the cabbage. Do you guys want to see this? I'm trying not to make you guys sick here. Oh, goodness. All right, I'm going to take this off. Ah. And see how this starts to cook down? I'm not sure what you guys can see. I just want to check see how much liquid is in here. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more liquid. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Cabbage is so good. And that's right, it's St. Patrick's Day this weekend. Not this weekend. It's St. Patrick's Day this week, so people will be... Cabbage is like super inexpensive this week. I should get around to make stuffed cabbage. But that's a project on, onto itself. 
All right, so I'm adding just a bit more stock and I did go to the fridge and get some water out of the water. So we got some liquid in there. So I'm gonna go over and get the potatoes and pop them in too right now. And we're gonna let this cook for like 15, 20 minutes. Let me strain them. <laughs> and I'm using yellow gold potatoes. Might be a bit much, but we'll see. Now I put them all in. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing about cooking. You really don't need to measure. I mean, you do to a certain extent, but. Let's check how much liquid is left in here. Okay. So I'm just gonna give this a stir. This makes, it's a huge amount of food. Now if you added like a protein to this, like the kielbasa, like I was saying, it's like super good. It really is. And there's my lid. Now let me move you back just a bit. There we go. We got a little bit of light there. There we go. All right. You see. Sorry, everybody. I'm walking in front of you. Grab my computer. <laughs> ah, that's funny, Becca. Yeah, cabbage is, yeah, Peg, cabbage is an under, I compare cabbage to Brussels sprouts, the way Brussels sprouts were, what, seven years ago, maybe, eight years ago? You never heard of Brussels sprouts being on a menu at a decent restaurant. You just, just now everybody eats Brussels sprouts, everybody. I admit it, my mom would boil them, oh, they were gross, I, I admit it. Um, but now, when you roast them or air fry them, they're fantastic. With the, with the gas prices rising, it's good to eat cabbage. Yes, <laughs> that's true, Becca. I saw something on um, in one of my Facebook nursing groups. I guess gasoline in LA is seven, like, it's between seven and eight dollars a gallon in LA. Wow, that is like, wow. Let's see. Yeah, Chris, I love stuffed cabbage. I usually make that once or twice a year because it's such a big project. Um, I usually get the big, you guys can't see it, but up there there's a stock pot up there that I used to use back home where I'd make stock. I think it's 21 quarts, 21 quart stock pot. And I would make... Um, stuffed cabbage and that because it freezes very very nicely stuffed cabbage freezes great and don't forget about my cabbage lasagna that is so good <laughs> I love that yeah Lori you can use um actually you can use any of the ninja appliances to reheat leftovers what are you trying to reheat so I'm just looking at the so I can read the comment All right, we're going to wait for Lori to leave something, but, but like pizza and stuff, pizza, um, even burgers. The have re, I, we went to Five Guys one time. I got a burger and the fries, and I ended up eating all the fries, but then I couldn't eat the burger. So I actually did reheat the burger in the Ninja Foodie. Large joints. You must be, are you from the UK, Chris? Because they called, um... Like meat over there with the bones in them, like joints. Hot dish. Hold on, let's see, Larry, microwave dial, blah, blah, blah. R2D2. <laughs> I'll have to look for your cabbage lasagna. Yeah, it's really good. Just it takes, instead of using um, like the pasta noodles, you use cabbage. It's super, super, super good. At least I like it. If you don't like cabbage, you're not going to like it. Lori Jones, a hot dish. Yep, Chris is from the UK, because I can tell. Because I watch some videos over there, and they always call them joints. I'm like, when I, the first time I heard that, I'm like, what's a joint? So I, a joint over here is, well, never mind. Um, 
Yeah, like a hot dish. Um, like what? I know it's gonna sound stupid, but what type of hot dish is it? Like stew? Is it like um, chicken parm? Is it like a rice dish? It, whoa, sorry. Is it? I know. So. But like with rice dishes and stuff, like even like a rye fry, a refried. <laughs> Peg's laughing. Like a refried. Um, refried. I was gonna say refried beans. Ref even with refried beans, you can reheat those nicely. Just add a little bit of water. And the same thing like with rice dishes, add a bit of water when you're reheating. So, yeah. I hear this bubbling away. I do want to pop my head over here and check this. And with this, just watch out for the dripping water. Not so much liquids in here. Liquid's looking good. And just stir it every once in a while. And if you need to add more liquid, go ahead and add it. But I don't think I'm going to need to add liquid to this. Now I wish I had a kielbasa. There we go. Oh, like a, like a tater tot hot dish. Um... Tater tot hot dish, like a tater tot casserole. Uh, I would probably do like 350. You can keep it covered if you don't want it to brown, but it will take a bit of time. Uh, probably like a depending on how much is in there. Like when I reheat a calzone or when I do a frozen calzone, it'll take 20 minutes to reheat that calzone inside that foil. Um, like on 350 on the Ninja Foodi air fry, and. Uh, trying to think but uh yeah if you don't want it brown just cover it with like parchment paper aluminum foil or something like that try 350 and then uh, just go from there like like test it at five minutes test it at eight or ten minutes and just go from there hi from rh oh uk hey max how are you yeah surprisingly enough because with youtube you can check like who's viewing and who's watching your videos so it's pretty neat it goes like uh, the U.S., U.K., I think Canada, then Australia. So it's, it's pretty neat that lowly little me that's cooking in a home kitchen that people are watching me all over the world. It's, so, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Yeah, see what I just did? Don't touch it. We are boiling. All right. Oh, you're welcome, Lori. But it's a lot of, like, especially, like, when it reheats and stuff, it's, like, a lot of, lot of trial and error, Lori. It's, it's like baking in this thing, like, using the traditional bake method. I find, like, for brownies and even cakes, it's, like, 300, unless you're using the steam bake. Um, if you're using the steam, let me push this back. If you're using the steam bake function, um, the baked goods actually come out pretty good, I have to say. I did, somebody did say, I think, on my last live stream, um, brownies don't come out with the steam bake, but I'm still going to give it a whirl. I'll pick up, like, an inexpensive brownie mix to play with it. Yeah, home cooks, yeah, you do. You actually pick up stuff like that. Like my mother's best friend, Rosemary. Um, her mother was Italian. So we, she cooks, like, traditional... Um, now once again, I hate to use the word peasant, but it's like, it's the foods they made at home in Italy. That's what she made. And they're oh so good. Oh, Becca, do you, do you have a channel? That's quite humbling. Yeah, it really is. Oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check out if, if you have a channel. I will definitely check it out. San Diego. I was looking at an I was looking at an assignment out there. Just so you wear on while checking YouTube videos for canning. Yeah, I can as well. I have an old, old, old ancient YouTube channel that is kind of horrific that I did back in 2011. Because um, when I was up north and stuff, I canned a lot. Uh, 
everything under the sun I can. Canned, fermented, everything else. And now I do my little travel adventures on the other channel. I have a separate channel where I do do travel. I'm, I'm not uh, too consistent with that because I really haven't been anywhere, but I'm working on my GX, my Lexus outside. But yeah, YouTube videos for canning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big, big canner. So I would like to, it'd be easier just to combine all these channels in one, but some people that, want, that cook with the nin, Ninja Foodie don't want to see me going on the Rimrock Trail and Moab, or, they, or vice versa, or see me play on the property up in New York. They don't want to uh, see me do that when they're interested in just in the foodie. So when I can, I just put a video out on the other channel. And I do have some upcoming, I have some stuff I have to put on the little trailer I bought and also my car. I have videos coming up on that stuff. Because, uh, yeah. I should have a, my, I should have a Jack of All Trades uh, channel. Alright, let's check. I'm just going to pop over and check this. Because it is bubbling away. And I forgot to time it. But usually I never time anything. So to make sure there's enough liquid. And just be careful, everybody, because mine, I have to push mine out. That's another thing. Like, my foodie hangs over like an inch and a half from the kitchen counter because of this microwave being in the way and also this cabinet. So that's one bad thing about having the attached lid. But I prefer to have the attached lid than have the other foodie. Now I'm going to add just a bit more liquid here. I'm just going to grab this and get water from the fridge. Because I don't want too much liquid, but I want to make sure I do have enough liquid. And I can usually tell by the sound it makes when I add the water. There we go. All right. Whoops. All right. I'm gonna let that continue to cook. Let's see. No. Oh, sorry for your loss, Becca. I understand what that's like. Yeah. Sorry for your loss, Becca, and your parents. It's, it's, it's hard no matter. It just, it's so hard. So I still think about my mom every day. So it's just, it's very difficult. And you're going from Texas to Arkansas? So a lot more out stuff to come when I get moved. Oh, so you have a channel. I will check out your channel, Becca. Definitely. Chris Woodruff, I love barbecue. Just waiting for spring to open the season. Yes. So that's one thing about, let's put this, because we're down here, I'm in a condo, and you're not supposed to have any propane out on your uh, lanai or patio out there, which really kind of sucks. So, yeah, up north, I can have whatever I want at my house up there. <laughs> you know, it's just I have the smoker, I've got, yeah, I've got tons of stuff up there, but yeah. Barbecue season, it's just around the corner, Chris. Well, probably a little bit earlier for you guys than compared to where I am in New York. Oh, thanks, Becca. I appreciate it. And I will check out, once I get off here, I will check out your channel. Presto has a digital electric canner for small loads. It's about the size of the Ninja Foodie. Yeah, Sylvia, my brother picked one up because my brother started canning. Yeah. Um, I know, I rolled my eyes because he doesn't follow the rules. There's strict rules when it comes to canning, especially pressure canning. But you cannot pressure can in, in a Ninja Foodie. You have to have a specialized pressure canning device. I always use the stovetop pressure canner, uh, the All-American I have. I love the All-American. But you can use a Presto, because I think I have a Presto. But there's, they came out with a new electric canner. I don't have one, and I haven't, um, so I can't really say anything about it. But that's awesome. Oh, David, I'm not making anything exciting. It's just a simple peasant dish because I for like the clock, it says quarter to three up on my clock on the wall. So I was an hour, <laughs> I was an hour off today. 
I didn't even think about looking at my cell phone or the computer. So I was going to do meatloaf. So next weekend, I'm going to do meatloaf, potatoes, and carrots. The recipe that's right in the book, it's one of those complete meals. Today, we're just doing the lowly cabbage, potato, onion, and bacon dish. But it's very, very tasty. Yeah, smoker. Yeah, grill and barbecue. Yeah, the smoker's kind of cool. Chris, have you ever tried making, um, I don't, don't even know if you guys have it over there. Pastrami? Homemade pastrami, if anybody, it's a process. It's like a three-day process because you have to brine it. You have to steam cook it. Wait. You have to brine it, smoke it, steam cook it. But it's so good because you take that whole, I'm going, my hands are getting bits like a fishing story. You get that whole brisket. You get to trim a lot of the fat off and stuff. And you take that whole thing and it goes whoop. <laughs> it's like the fishing story that shrinks. But it's so, so good. So worth it. Yeah, tasty is what matters. Yeah, simple foods are the best. They truly, truly are. At least I think so. Whole Packers brisket. Yeah. Yep. It's just, it's amazing. The only thing, Chris, I haven't mastered because, well, I'm not... Because a lot of times, like with pulled pork, I will smoke a whole... Um, what do you call that? Oh my gosh. Pork butt. I will, they call it a pork butt over here in America. That big chunk of pork with the... With the there's a couple bones in it. A couple joints. Um, I smoke that. I'll do one or two at a time, but then I just give it away to friends and family. I like it, but I don't love it. But I do like the process of cooking it, which seems kind of crazy. I have not done my own brisket yet. That's one thing on my bucket list. I do have to do my own brisket because when I do my pork butts, I will get up at five o'clock in the morning and start that chimney to get those, um, like the hardwood charcoal going. And then, yeah, if you see my house up in New York, I have like chunks of apple wood and I chopped down a peach and a pear tree so I chunked those up too so I do actually have chunks of the fruit trees to where I can smoke that pork butt but and then I usually it doesn't get done usually till like seven eight o'clock that night because it's like low and slow the whole way I'm just trying to pay attention over here Yeah, pork butt, pork shoulder, because they call it butt here, but I think it's actually from the shoulder. No, Sylvia, uh, pastrami is not made from corned beef. There is actually videos out there. There are videos out there to where you can do a pastrami from corned beef, but it's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different, because I think it's brined. Some of the pickling spices are the same, but you can do that. I haven't done it, but some people have. I'm not sure if Chris has done it. I'm not sure if Chris has done it. Yeah. Yeah, the pork butt on the barbecue all day is fantastic. You, you know, you make yourself an awesome, amazing rub. You rub that butt up the night before, put it in the fridge, you know, take it out early, because I usually do mine around five. Take it out, let it sit until you're ready. Because it takes like a good 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get those coals to where you want them. Then you can put the butt on the grill. And I'm not sure what type of smoker, if you have like the electric smoker. Because my brother has the electric. I have the Oklahoma Joe where the compartment's on the side. It's an old one. It's very, very heavy. <laughs> yeah, Becca, I wish, I, I wish that happened to me too. <laughs> Yeah, corned beef and pastrami, they're slightly, slightly different. And I think it's like in the process of it. Because like you, when it comes to pastrami, you're supposed to um, smoke it and then you steam it. I'm just going to come over here and check this. Ah. Yeah, it's dripping all over the floor, but that's okay. Make sure I have enough liquid in here. Wow. I'm going to take one of these potatoes out and just see. I can tell. I don't think it's done. But sometimes it takes like 20, 20, 30 minutes to cook this. And I don't want to, if the potatoes are done, I don't want to, um, don't want to overcook them. Let me grab a fork from over here.
Nope. I don't, I don't think so. Nope. It's good. But it's not done. And I think we're going to need salt. Just going to have to grab me a little bit more water. Because we're getting down to nothing in there. Probably like five more minutes. It's definitely gonna need salt. I can tell by tasting the potato. The potato is just soak up and suck up the salt. Let's see, I have a Weber Smoky Mountain. So easy to use, maintains temp well. Hmm. Smoky Mountain. Oh, is that the one? I know, I think I know which one you're talking about. I almost bought one of those and I didn't. Now this is a few years back. Ooh, stuffed pork loin wrapped in bacon is amazing for a short smoke. That actually sounds good. God, I see. I want to use my pizza oven here, and I just got a new flat top griddle. It's in the car because I can't use it here at the condo. But then I was talking to one of the neighbors. He goes, well, if, he goes, you can use it until you get caught. <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't do that. Um, so I'm going to have to take it to... Um, my friend's parents' house, which they live right around the corner here, and uh, use it at their house and smoke up the area. So you're happy with the Weber Smoky Mountain? I'll have to check that out. I think, I'm trying to think, is that the one? I'll have to look. I'll have to look it up because there's so many smokers now on the market. So many smokers. My brother has an electric. I just don't know which one it is. And uh, hopefully Michael won't watch this, but he smoke he oversmokes a lot of stuff. But he does a good job. Um, he does a good job with actually whole turkeys because he'll actually pick up a whole bunch of turkeys around Thanksgiving time because they're so inexpensive, and he'll like um, smoke up a whole bunch of them. He'll brine them, smoke them. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think he smoked everything under the sun from bacon to chicken breast to just everything, turkey legs. Just experimenting with the smoker. Okay, maintains the temp well, which is good. Oh, Easter. Yeah, Easter's um, April. Is it the first or second week of week April this year? I can't remember. I think it's the second week. I think it's a bit late. Then when Easter comes around, then then you know spring is spring is on its way. Well, spring is there, but... I was talking to, well, my brother called. I was supposed to do a live stream yesterday, but my brother called me. So talking to him was, you know, I wanted to talk to my brother. So he was, he was sitting in his plow truck because they got another storm up there. I was like, oh my gosh. March is, March is brutal in New York. And then also somebody left a comment from New Hampshire on the YouTube yesterday. They were getting, I forget, 6 to 12 inches? Yikes. Easter, thanks. Thanks, Sylvia. I knew it was like the second, yeah, because I, I go, oh, it's kind of late. Because Ash Wednesday, I was at the hospital. and um, I love New York. You're talking about New York City, aren't you, Chris? <laughs> I'm like um, three hours north of New York City, right outside of Albany. But Albany's kind of cool because I'm three hours from Montreal, three hours from New York City, three hours from Boston, and, and well, I would say three hours from certain parts of New Hampshire, like the beach over there. Yeah. Yeah, New York City's changed, Chris. It's changed a, a bit since this pandemic has started, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll leave it at that. Oh, wow. 
looking to emigrate. You want to move to the city or someplace else over here in the U.S. of A? The U.S. of A. There she is. I bet you love. I make barbecue seasoned bacon wrapped smoked provolone cheese and jalapeno. Oh, quail. Jalapeno stuffed quail breast. Mmm, that sounds delicious. <sighs> Becca, when I head west, I'm stopping off in Arkansas. I'm going to stop off in Arkansas and see you. New York State. Okay, yeah. New York State is beautiful, Chris. Um, the four seasons are fabulous. Um, winter's a bit long. But fall, fall is my favorite time up there. Fall is just, uh, it's just spectacular. It's been, it really, truly is. It's really, really nice. And, um, yeah, it's just beautiful there. <laughs> Becca says, Lol, come on, girl. You know something, Becca? I will, will be heading out that way. I just don't know which way I'm going yet. It depends on my nursing assignment. Because my nursing assignment, these are my states I'm looking at. Because it's going to get hot, but I'm just going to have to deal with it because I'm kind of late to the party of taking an assignment out west. I'm looking at Arizona. Hold on. New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and I would prefer like western Colorado. Not, not that I don't like the eastern part of Colorado. I just want to be on the western part of Colorado because I really, really wanted to spend more time like in Moab. And there's a bunch of trails I wanted to take. That There's a back way that goes from Grand Junction, Colorado into Moab, Utah. It's just something, it, it's just, there's a draw out there for me because it's so totally different than New York. Like Utah is just, see, I get goosebumps. I want, and plus I wanted to go to the Valley of the Gods. I wanted to go to the Grand Escalante. I didn't get there. Uh, Mesa Verde in Colorado. Yeah, there's just so many places. Oh, Arizona. And I haven't been to Sedona. Just just, you know, just stuff like that. Just, um, because if you look at, yeah, if you look at Arizona and look at New York, they're just completely two different landscapes. You know, like we have a ton of water in New York. There's no water out there. It's just, it's just the differences. Arizona. Are you in, um, you don't have to give the city, Leanne. Is it northern or southern or, because Arizona's a pretty big state. Because there was an assignment in Flagstaff, but I don't qualify for that one. Because they, they do trauma there. I don't do trauma. So I was kind of bummed out about that, too. I was like, I would, I would jump at Flagstaff, Arizona in a heartbeat. Oh, you, Chris, you aim for fall? Yeah. It's super nice. It's just, it's gorgeous. You have to go apple picking and make the apple pies and get the cider. It's just so much fun. Ooh, frog legs. My father loves frog legs. Cactus. Cactus. Cactus, are you talking about those flat cactus leaves? Well, not leaves, they're kind of, I'm not sure what you call them, but they are delicious. I had those at a Mexican restaurant here down in Florida. So, so good. Southern near the Mexican border, so Tucson area probably, I'm assuming. Hold on, I'm going to pop over here for a second, everybody. Watch, I'm going to burn this dish because I'm, I'm having a lovely chat with everybody. <laughs> ah! Oh, my meter's coming down. Ah. Put this over here. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this because I think it's done. But I am going to add some more salt. Yeah, this is looking... I know it looks doesn't look the greatest, but it's oh so good. Let me put this in the sink. Crash, bang, boom. Let me grab some salt. You guys can watch me. I know I have to get diamond crystal salt is my favorite. The Morton salt's okay, but I prefer diamond crystals. South of Tucson. Wow. You are on the border. I don't know what's south of there. I, I don't know the cities, but holy mackerel. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more salt. A little bit more pepper. And like I said, you don't have to add as much salt and pepper, but the potatoes needed the, um, I'm going to add a little bit more butter. There we go. And the residual heat will melt that butter and the salt and everything else. Oh, this 
looks so good. And I might leave it like this. What you traditionally do, you cut up um, like a kielbasa or something and you can pop it in there or your sausage of choice. You can actually take a sausage, but kielbasa pairs well with that. It's actually quite nice. And you toss that in. And the same goes for the bacon. Like I have a, a bunch of bacon here. So what I can do is either chop it or crumble that up and put that into the dish. But I think what I'm gonna do is use it for a garnish and I'm going to put it on top because I think it'll actually be better actually. Because the bacon, if I put it in there now, it's going to get soft. Oh, the biscuits. I haven't made biscuits in forever. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, Adam Bomb. For the next 10, 15 years, I'm in Folsom. No, my cousin lives in Sacramento and Folsom, it's right there. I think there was a nursing assignment there too. <laughs> um, no, Polly's, yes. Oh, the cheesecake. I haven't made, you know something, you're bringing up all these things. I haven't made a cheesecake in forever. Although I did make two cheesecakes, but they're out of season now. I made a candy cane and a, what's that, like, uh, eggnog cheesecake. I have those videos, they're stored on the computer for next year because I made them too late because I was sick and I didn't put them out before Christmas. So I'll put them out next year. But yeah, cheesecake, I haven't made cheesecake in forever. And the biscuits, yeah. I am gonna try, um, like on my first camping trip, I'm make sure I'm plugged into power. I'm gonna try making biscuits at the campsite in the Ninja Foodie, it'll be super fun. Or for that matter, I could probably do them in a Dutch oven. I haven't done that in years either. Cooked over a fire. Ooh, sourdough artesian loaves. Yes. I think we have a sourdough in, I think we have a sourdough in the fridge down here. Oh, I know, Adam. I was just joking. I got it. You know something, Adam? I got to find that Johnny Cash song. But, um... See, this just goes right out of my head because I haven't heard it in a long time. Florida. Yeah, Florida's Naples is... Uh, I'm going to split this. <laughs> Naples is uh, interesting. It's well manicured. And uh, like on the road, I'm gonna, on my way to work on um, the other day, I, uh, there was a McLaren. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, because watching that show, The Grand Tour, which... Stars all the, was it, Jeremy Clarkson, uh, Richard Hammond, and uh, James May. So by watching that Grand Tour show, I know all the cars down here in Naples. Because I heard it, I'm like, oh my god, that's a McLaren. Or like with the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces. And what else? Lambos are just a dime a dozen down here. Uh, but it was interesting to see these cars, and I actually recognized them by watching that show, the Grand Tour. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, the Folsom Blues. I'll have to have that as my background music. Irish soda bread. Oh, yeah, Irish, yeah. Irish. St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day is when? Thursday. Yes, my last day of work down here in Naples is this Wednesday, and then my birthday is Thursday, St. Patrick's Day. Happy birthday to me. I'm out of a job. Yay, no, just joking. Yeah, the biscuits. Those biscuits were super easy, if I remember. <laughs> I'm a total Richard Hammond. So, Adam, what you're saying is you crash million dollar cars? Hmm. <laughs> Fewer crashes. Yeah. He will never live that down. I forget what kind of car that was, but I think it was like a million bucks. Um, it was a white electric car. I think it was in the Swiss, was it in Switzerland or something? On that windy road, because even I was like, how did he go off the road like that? Thank goodness he was, you know, not injured too badly. No, I'm not leaving Florida forever. I'm just, um, I must put this. I'm getting on in years, and there's a lot of this country that I want to see, and the best way to see it right now for me is to travel nurse around. 
So I don't want to be 65, 70 years old going, why didn't I go to Alaska? Why didn't I go to Moab again? Or why didn't I do this and why didn't I do that? So it's kind of... Plus, like, change is good. We humans do not like change. I don't like change. However, I force myself to embrace the change. And I think going to different facilities, going to different states, like come across different cultures, different ways of doing things at the hospital. Like upstate New York, for instance, it's mostly, like, what is it, white, Asian, Indian. Those are the, the greater, like, races, I guess you want to say. Down here in Florida, you have um, Cubans, um, Mexicans, lots of um, Haitians, uh, uh, Central America, I'm trying to think here, and even South America. I work with a guy that's from um, Uruguay. I couldn't believe it. That's the first person I ever met. I won't give you any, his name, but yeah, he's from there. And then I met a bunch of people from Cuba. It's just, it's, I love meeting different people in the different cultures. And I actually do learn a lot. Like if you ask them questions and whatnot, yeah, you learn, you learn a lot. And then, yeah, you just, yeah. And change is good, everybody, even though it kind of sucks. I just dig. Oh, wow, Sylvia, eight years you've had your sourdough? That's fantastic. Mine usually dies and I have to get more. I just dig cheap American cars with more engine than safety precautions. Talking about Cuba. <laughs> um, bacon or driving? <laughs> admitted to the ER. You don't want to be admitted to the ER right now. It's crazy busy down here. It is, trust me, it is crazy, crazy busy down here. Um the hospitals not just not because of the corona or anything it's just just because there's so many people down here wow eight years Sylvia I'm flabbergasted by that that's fantastic you kept that alive that long I should take when I should take some a bit of this one that we have in the fridge I should put some in the cooler because um I have like a little fridge in my trailer and I also have a fridge in the car so just to keep it just to keep it alive and I've always wanted to make, I've never made sourdough pancakes. I've never made those. That's something interesting I would like to do. It'd be kind of cool. But this is done. Shall we do a taste test? Let me grab a bowl. As you see the squeaky cabinet. I'll grab a fork. Yeah, it doesn't look the best, but it's so tasty, everybody. And a lot of potatoes mashed up a bit. Because most of the time, I actually make this. I'm not going to eat this whole thing. I just gotta, want you guys to see it. And what you can do, like, I'm not going to do it, but you can actually crumble up the bacon. Oh, you can, can't see. You can take the bacon and crumble it and put it on top. Now, most of the way, times I make this, I had some potatoes I needed to use up. And I just bought them the other day, but that's besides the point. Most of the time, I just make this with just plain cabbage. I do cabbage, onions, butter, salt, pepper and some chicken stock, and it comes out great. It's a great side dish, it's just wonderful. And this is like super hot. And cutting it in the strips is fine. I don't see any long strands. They actually just broke. Here, I'll just take a little bit because it is super hot. I'm gonna taste for um, seasoning, salt, pepper, Mm. To be honest with you guys, I prefer it without the potato. The potato is nice in it. It uh, extends the dish out. However, I prefer just the plain old cabbage. Because cabbage is it's an underrated veg. People need to give it love. See? The long strands are kind of... Usually I, usually I cut them into like one inch um, pieces. Mmm, good. I feel bad I'm eating in front of you and I can't share. But try it both ways. It's actually a good dish too because I was, where was I? North Carolina maybe? I went to a barbecue place 
It was a buffet style barbecue place years ago. And they actually had cabbage on the barbecue sides. Like, you know, from macaroni to, you know, macaroni and cheese and then like macaroni salad. But they had cabbage. So that would actually go great like for a barbecue. Because it does taste amazing actually at room temp. If you let it cool down because it's like super hot right now. The plain cabbage tastes awesome. And I'm getting a lot of spice. I can taste it in my mouth from the, from the pepper. So don't add as much pepper if you don't like black pepper. I love black pepper, so I tend to go overboard on it, especially when it comes to potatoes and with this cabbage dish. It's super good. It's just a simple, basic, it's just tasty. It's just, I don't know, it's just good. <laughs> if I stroke out, I'll drive to Georgia or Texas first. <laughs> hey, man. Sorry, Adam. It's just, you know... Florida explodes in the winter. You can tell by the parking lots, people on the roads, it's, yeah. Compared to when I first came down here in September till now, huge, huge difference, huge difference. Alrighty, well. Let's see, raise my glasses up so I can see. People are leaving because the dish is done. But yeah, listen guys, I'm actually gonna have this, uh... what's that say? There's a system, last resort, slather some on parchment, dry and store it. Yeah, as long as there's not a lot of fat on it, Sylvia, because I've dehydrated, I think I've dehydrated everything under the sun because my dehydrator, the, oh my God, what kind of, I forget which one I have up north. I am losing my marbles, but I do have like a nine, seven or nine trade dehydrator up north and I have de dehydrated everything under the sun just for fun from hamburger to chili to um, sweet potatoes, just everything. The whole key is if you want, especially like for long term, if you want long term storage of your dry goods, dehydrated items, oops, it cannot have any fat in it. It's like the difference with, I just pointed over there, the instant mashed potatoes. If you have plain instant mashed potatoes, it's going to last longer than the loaded baked potatoes that I picked up the other day, just to try. And then, um, yeah, but then that's it. Let's see, they're dry freeze. I'm making a lot of SD waffles. Yeah, they freeze. Y'all have it going on. Yeah, Naples does have it going on. Yeah, Naples is, Naples is unique. It's, uh, yeah, compared to the rest of, compared to the rest of Florida. So, all right. Well, thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate y'all on my, to watch my impromptu live stream. Next Saturday, I hope to do one. I'm not on call next weekend, so I can do either a three or a five. You guys can comment. Comment and let, let me know. I'll let you guys decide because you guys are the ones that are here. So if you want it like at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or maybe later, like 3, 5, or 8, whatever. And I'll make sure I'm free all that day. Thanks, Becca. And I'm going to check out your channel when I get done. So that's going to be cool. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And enjoy the rest of your uh, Sunday and have a great week. And I will see you next weekend. Thanks, everybody. Oh, my God, don't go. What am I going to do for the rest of my afternoon? <laughs>